It's all a ploy to get you to get your COVID vaccine. Yes. So let's <laughs> talk about the, the yellow paint now. All right. The, the newest Gamergate, yes. yellow paint. <laughs> uh, the new old one, because it's uh, been around for a while. Last week, thanks to the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo, some old video game discourse returned and overtook social media. The use of yellow paint to mark certain in-game objects or ledges. All it took was a now viral tweet of cloud climbing some yellow rocks in the new demo and a comment about how yellow paint was a virus and bam the debate is raging all over again like i didn't know comet, that's what started it yeah like a comment returning uh, for another scheduled pass by earth the yellow paint topic has once again predictably appeared leading to endless takes jokes threads opinions and arguments why is this topic so incredibly capable of sucking in everyone around and it for days or weeks on end well it's not really because of the paint but be, uh, everything the yellow splotches represent so when when I think of yellow paint in video games and when I Google it, the only thing that comes up is Resident Evil 4. That was, I think, the most recent example of like the most egregious use of it. There's a lot of it. There's a lot and of it. And it does kind of hold your hand. So I know from a personal perspective, my first experience with yellow paint syndrome, as it were, was uh, the Tomb Raider reboot. Yes. Um, okay. It was white paint, though. Yes. But it was used to demark where you can like shimmy up a wall, and things like that. Yeah. So the the paint is representative of where you're supposed to go. Yeah. Uh, in the original Resident Evil Four, there was no yellow paint. Correct. Because it was very obvious what you're supposed to interact with. Mm -hmm. Because back then, backgrounds looked like a different saturation and resolution than objects that you could interact with yeah so they clearly stood out mm -hmm. and that was just an artifact of the technology yeah these days things look a lot better so instead of they i guess they could in resident evil 4 specifically i guess they couldn't really design around it because mm -hmm. they are remaking a game yeah so the solution to that was to just put a yellow mark on it i know and uh, I, I don't i'm not that upset by that no uh if you scroll down a little bit there's an example there's a tweet somebody the the yellow paint is so unnecessary obviously a ladder is climbable obviously a crate is breakable why did they do this um there are some games i don't remember resident evil 4 specifically but i know there are some games where some ladders are not climbable dude i'm playing call of duty yeah right now war zone mm -hmm. fast paced high octane battle royale yeah and you know how in call of duty you can open a door yeah or you could bust through the door mm -hmm. always busting through doors yeah, because because you got to go fast mm -hmm. and there are so many doors you just cannot yeah. and, and there's no more indication or anything that you cannot get into the door so i'll be in the middle of a gunfight and i'll bust into a door that you can't bust into and then i'm dead yeah uh so yeah I understand, at least from Resident Evil's perspective, where, why you would need yellow paint. Because, yeah. again, it's a remake of a game that doesn't have that sort of artifact anymore. They mm -hmm. needed to replace the artifact. The most recent example... I don't play... I guess I don't play a lot of AAA games anymore. Yeah. Uh, but the most recent example of paint yellow paint syndrome was the VR version of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm-hmm. People are saying that Horizon Zero Dawn has a similar thing. The VR version has white paint, and it was very egregious, mm -hmm. and uh, it didn't fit within the world. There was just paint everywhere, and uh, it, it, it made the game feel more linear than it was and uh, was a little too hand-holdy. Right. You know? I remember, I think it was Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PS Vita actually did yellow paint for like grabbable ledges mm -hmm. and stuff even though the ps3 games at the time didn't really follow those same steps no. but on the vita that was done because you could also touch the screen to grab the ledges so it was like an indicator of where to put your finger right on how like where nathan drake should go that's also a vita game yes you know so like back then i i kind of understand having indications for having a linear path especially it's a fucking not only is it an old game mm -hmm. it's a mobile game yeah so you don't have a lot of room to design around that mm -hmm. uh the last of us i think doesn't have yellow paint but it had i think it cleverly colors things yellow that you can interact right. with it, they're, they're like different shades of, of of yellow but they fit within the world so mm -hmm. they stay it's like a sort of subconscious way for things to stand out and i think 
some of the best games are the ones that uh, guide you towards the places that you're supposed to be going and the things right. that you're supposed to be touching. But to counter that argument, there are instances where sometimes it's not obvious what a player is supposed to be doing or should be going. Right. There's a there's actually a really famous example of Bulletstorm. When, yeah. the, when <laughs> the developers Bulletstorm. were making Bulletstorm, you know, that's a high-octane shooting game. Everything's blowing up left and right. You're killing things left and right. They had exploding barrels in the game. Mm. But when they were playtesting it, the barrels just looked like regular barrels. Nobody was shooting at them to blow things up. They had to change the color of the barrels to bright red. Yeah, they have so to So that red. people know, oh, those are exploding barrels. Yes. So Barrels have to be red. Barrels if you can, if you can explode them, they got to be red. Yeah. But, you know, that leads to there are certain instances where color coding certain things in the game have to happen if that's a way for the developers to guide the players to certain things. Yes. Uh, my argument is that I think it should be within world. I, I, I think that... Uh, the, Again, the yellow paint is 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 the example that everybody's calling it the yellow paint syndrome. Yeah. Um. In the in the example of Resident Evil Four, I think it had to be done, or something had to, there had to be some sort of indication of what to do because mm -hmm. it's a remake of a game that had a different thing in it. Yeah. It was a different way to indicate where you're supposed to do. Um. I think that it could be many different things. I think it could be like, if there's a bunch of doors and only one of them you can go through, it, it, it can be a different color. Yeah. It just make it fit within the world. Like for example, uh, the last of us where mm -hmm. things are like a little yellow, they still look like they're within the world, but for some reason you subconsciously are like, I want right. to go there. It's, it's not as egregious as just a splash of paint or like, like, playing... like all these, like all these freaking uh, people in the world, all the zombies in resident yeah. evil are just painting things <laughs> that you're supposed to go to. I'm playing uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy right now, and a lot of the doors that you can't go through are actually, like, fenced off or boarded mm -hmm. up. Yeah. You know, easily indicating you can't go through there. Yeah, I think Naughty Dog is really good at yeah. uh, uh, the set dressing and making things uh, look within world, but also, like, I obviously can't go It does there. come down to, like, an art direction thing. Yeah, But I definitely. don't necessarily think that, hi like, explicitly highlighting, like, what's mm -hmm. climbable or where you need to go is a problem. That's more of an accessibility thing, hmm. like to help game like gamers who maybe aren't as like obvious, like or in tune to like what's obvious in the game world. Because I'll tell you, I play many games where I'm just running around a room trying to figure out where to yeah. go. No, I and if there had been a, like a nice bright piece of yellow paint to tell me go that way, I would have known to have gone that I way. I definitely like to have my hand held a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think in uh, Prince of Persia, the new one, there's a set, right in the beginning of the game, they say, do you want us to tell you on the map where the next objective is? And yeah. I was like, absolutely, fucking lutely Because you can say no yeah. and then play it like more like a traditional Metroid game. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was like, no, I want you to tell me where to go immediately. I don't yeah. like trying to figure out where I'm going. Um, that being said, I do think it's uh, a little bit of a dance between art direction and game design where... Uh, they have to kind of, you know, meet meet together. Yeah. Because the game designer has to be like, we want them to go this way. How do we get them to go this way? Because right. you can do like a Nintendo thing where you're like kind of just gently push people in the right, right direction, you know? Um, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, there are, I think there are examples of games where it's fine. And, yeah. and it, like, it makes total sense to like have just a, a, color or even an arrow like in forza they just mm -hmm. literally it's a it's an arrow on the ground follow the arrow um mirror's edge is a great example yeah everything that, was just red yeah but uh it that felt like an arcade game you know like yeah. like like i wanted to touch the red stuff you know it, yeah. it was it was it it, it it didn't feel like a real world situation another example that uh was brought up is in um dead space the original dead space okay they were saying how they were trying to like subtly hint that in order to defeat the necromorphs, you have to cut off their limbs. But during, again, during play testing, people are automatically just preconditioned to do headshots. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't take down the necromorphs. That makes it much harder. So they actually had to scribble on the walls in the game in blood, cut off their <laughs> limbs. They did that like a few times in the beginning of the game until you like, you got it drilled into your head. Oh, I'm supposed to cut off mm -hmm. their limbs. Like, that's an extreme case where you yeah. literally have to spell it out for the player. But I think at the, by the same time, by having it look like it was, like, written by some dude, like, in his own blood, like, writing it on the wall, 
sort of added to like the the horror element of that particular game and you're and you're kind of discovering it within the world you're the guy who just discovered this yeah. beast for the first time and you don't know how to kill it yeah and then you see on the wall a previous guy left you a message cut off the oh, oh okay. okay i gotta call their list yeah in, uh, in destiny uh there's a bunch of different types of enemies and one of them is uh the vex i think they're yeah. they're robots um and they have a very clear white uh like iron man sort of thing on their chest like a big bright white light yeah and when i first play the game you shoot them in the chest and it explodes like it's a headshot yeah uh like headshots on other enemies makes their head just pop off uh so with, with this specific enemy you have to shoot them in the chest some of my friends didn't know that and didn't realize that they were still aiming for the head, right. even though they had a big white thing on their chest. So I think that's an example of uh, art direction showing you that's the thing you're supposed to hit. Yeah. But for some reason, it's not taking and maybe it needs to be explained. Maybe that yeah. game needed uh, blood written on the wall, shoot their chest. I think, oh, honestly, a lot of the um, the anti yellow paint sentiment that's going on is because you know it is obviously a way to like help people play the game if like something's not obvious to them and i think a lot of that comes down to people who like love their really super hard games like your elden rings and your dark souls and like you know oh i can i can beat every halo on legendary in a day or whatever like the super hardcore games feeling like games are too easy now too many like too many babies are playing games there's not a, you know they don't make games for real big tough manly men anymore who can like you know beat tony hawk's pro skater with a guitar hero controller and people like that you know what i mean like it, yes. it's a pride thing it's like if a game is difficult and i can beat it that means i'm better than you rather than games just being fun and like letting anybody have access to them so i like hard games yeah i complain about games a lot because right. I really value uh, the user experience. I want the game to be... I want the game to hold my hand a little bit, but not be like too explicit about right. it. I don't want them to jump down my throat. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's got to be a certain type of difficulty. Like, yeah. like a game that just beats the shit out of you and doesn't explain anything about how to play it is, is a problem. Yeah. I like games that uh, you figure it out yeah and it makes you feel smart there's a there's a difference between like there's nothing wrong with like playing a good hard game yeah. but there's there is a difference between like good difficulty and bad difficulty yeah i played the demo of ghost runner 2 recently and i it was difficult but i was really enjoying it because yeah. it, it was like a katana zero thing where like you're do you're doing your run but like you keep getting hurt but like you were learning as you're going until you get to the motorcycle <laughs> section and you have to barrel through a tube at supersonic speed avoiding all the obstacles and the controls are so loose that like you can't like you know get good traction in the tube so you're flipping all over and crashing <laughs> into the walls that's bad difficulty game sucks where's my camera game sucks <laughs> don't play it <laughs> i had a similar experience with the first ghost runner yeah. people liked it but i did not did the like it did the first one have a motorcycle in it no then i might like it more <laughs> no it just controlled really weird yeah. like i didn't like the way it, it felt because I, I i liked the controls of ghost runner 2 up until the motorcycle yeah, yeah. uh yeah, I, I, a good example is also Mario Maker. Like, I don't like the levels where, like the Kaizo levels where, yeah, where people call them Kaizo levels, where you just like you, you just get killed out of nowhere. Like, yeah. like you'll hit a, you'll go to jump over a gap and you'll hit a invisible block and die. You know, yeah. and you'll do that over and over again until you finally figure out where not to jump and stuff. Yeah. And I don't, that's bad design. I, I don't think that's a good difficulty. A yeah. good difficulty is when you know what your not supposed to do and it's just really hard to not yeah. do it yeah, like the deaths have to feel like they're your fault not yeah. the game's fault exactly yeah well we're not talking about dying we're talking about games that are holding your hand through right the, through, through well, what to I, do and I, where think, to go. I think you know part of the pun but it goes hand in hand you know yeah some people enjoy exploring the world and like yeah. figuring it out uh I do if the world is really enticing and there's a lot to do in the world, but for yeah. the most part, I just want to play through the main right. main quest and get through the game. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't think Resident Evil Four is the type of game where you need to do a lot of exploring. You know? No. They try, like they added like exploring elements in the remake, but it's not yeah. really that type of game. Yeah, and a lot of the games where you're gonna be seeing yellow paint or white paint, uh, it's gonna be 
games where you're not really supposed to be exploring too much. Yeah. It's a linear experience. Mm -hmm. But I think the paint is uh is is a last resort. I I think that uh there's a lot of other ways through art direction and game design where you could uh, gently push people in the right direction of where they're right. supposed to go. And I, I, we talk about Naughty Dog a lot. And Naughty yeah. Dog, I think, does a really good job. And then other games, too. Yeah. I can't think of any off the top of my head. I think <laughs> Arkham games probably do a good job of it. Well, the Arkham games are more open worlds. So, like, there's actually an arrow, like, pointing you, like, where the objective marker is. That's a good point. But, yeah. It, it, uh, well, in the, terms first of those, one, the first, first one, one really. not so much, no. Yeah. But, like, yeah, the, the level design of it... You know, they lay it all out like, for you to see. Like, they give you certain cues, like vents look a certain way, yeah. and like grapple points look a certain way, and gargoyles look a certain way, and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then uh, Griffinix says, and detective mode. That's a good point. Yeah. Arkham was a bad example. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> Arkham really just tells you exactly what you need to yeah. do. Yeah. And then every game started adding detective mode to it. So, yeah, that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Every game around that time, every game had a button you pressed, and then it literally just everything that you needed to do lit you up. You walked and in on me playing Tomb Raider once, and I had it was like the I forgot what they called it, and you you said if this game fucking has Tomb Raider vision, <laughs> it's so stupid. It is that's dumb. It, it was. That's worse than yellow paint. Like I like look, I love the Tomb Raider reboot, but yeah, Tomb Raider vision was not. <laughs> In in Batman, it makes sense because he's fucking Batman yeah. and he needs technology. Yeah. In Assassin's Creed, I understand it a little bit because these guys are like mystical beings that have like some yeah. sort of special powers. They also have it in the Hitman games. Like, I guess they also have it in uh, fucking The Last of Us. We're like, it's not Detective Vision. It's like, you, it, it's like that they do yeah. it in the Hitman. Like, no, you sit and like you listen. It's Detective Vision. Yeah. It's Detective Vision. Yeah. In, in Tomb Raider, it just didn't make any goddamn sense. <laughs> in The Last of Us, I kind of. The Last, the last of, of Us is like on the line. It's like almost. Well, the Last stupid. of Us and Hitman, like to their credit, they like bend it in a way that like makes sense for yeah. that universe. Like, it's not just like hit a button and then the world goes blue and everybody's skeleton is highlighted. Like, it, it, it looks like. He's listening carefully to what's going on. Yeah, and in, in the in the Last of Us, it's like that yeah. too. It, it it makes it seem like he's listening. Yeah, uh, I guess it's just all the art direction around it. Like there's like uh, things are like pulsating yeah, and, yeah. And, and like stuff. You can clearly tell that he's like listening. But in Tomb Raider, it's like literally it's, it's fucking Tomb, <laughs> Tomb Vision. Vision. Yeah, that's like a a weird game design yeah. loophole. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with holding the, holding the, no. the viewer's hand. I, it it just needs there's a there's a little dance you have to do. Yeah, with uh with the game design, it's it takes a certain type of game for that to make sense and 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 for that to work out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna immediately throw a game out if it's got fucking yellow right. paint in it. Same. Anyway, even if it does make like the art, even if it does clash with like the art direction. <laughs> I I'll I'll just be like that's a little stupid if it clashes yeah. with our direction, similar to how I was with yeah. uh, uh, Tomb Raider. Stupid. Keep Tomb in mind Vision. though, we come from a generation where most games, all you had to do was go to the right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I do remember being upset about it with the Horizon VR game, but I think I just didn't like the Horizon VR game. I think yeah. it was just a stupid game. That was I. I didn't like it because the whole game was so linear and then also it had the white paint. And yeah. it's like, you can't even go anywhere if you wanted to anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 